Hi, I'm John Peters and I just finished building this table. This video will talk about the table top. The table top is quarter sawn white oak. It's five quarters of an inch thick, 81 inches long and 41 inches wide. We'll discuss the board selection, how the boards are joined, sanding, staining, and finishing. Well now I'm ready to build my table top. And the first thing I'm going to do is run this edge through the joiner so I have a nice clean straight edge and then this side I'll straighten that edge on the table saw. Once all the boards have a straight edge on both sides I can lay them out and glue them up. Now that all the boards have been joined and cut to a rough length I'm ready to clean up the other side on the table saw. Now all the boards are rough cut to length. The edges are clean and straight and I've aligned the boards in the order that I want to glue them up. What I'll do now is mark them for the biscuit joiner. You do that by just lettering or numbering the boards A, B, right down the line and then from the edge of the board I measure in 10 to 12 inches put a mark. From that mark every 10 to 12 inches I'll put another mark. What that is, these are indication lines for the biscuit joiner. Now, the point of the biscuits isn't so much about adding strength to the tabletop as it is um, that it enables you to line the tabletop up. All the boards are going to have a natural wave and gives you a, a good opportunity to get the board as straight as possible before you clamp them. Look, this board down here wants to go left a little bit. I'm going to pull it over and then convince it. Now, because the top is so big, it's really heavy, I decided to build the tabletop in two pieces. And once the two pieces are done, then I'll join them together. Now I'm going to cut the tabletop to length. To do that, I'll just take my framing square. Put a line where I want to cut, and then I'll take this jig I made for my circular saw, and I'll place it on the line, and anything on this side of the quarter inch piece of plywood will be cut away. Now that the tabletop is cut to length and width, it's time to sand. And to do that, I'm going to use my belt sander, and I'm going to sand across the grain. I know that everybody says, sand with the grain, and that is true, but for now, I want to go across the grain to flatten the top out. So, to make it a little clearer, let's say that this board in the center is a little lower than these two boards. If I understand that, going with the grain, the sander is going to follow those levels, and I'll end up with a tabletop with waves in it. By going across the grain, I flatten the whole top out. Once the top is flat, then I'll sand with the grain. Now I'm going to continue to sand with the grain. Uh, but I'm going to start to use a finer paper. This is 50, and I'm going up to 80 grit paper. Now that I've finished sanding the entire tabletop with the belt sander going with the grain, remember I started going across the grain, it's time to go to the orbital sander. Now this is an 80 grit paper, and now I'll sand the entire top and the edge with the orbital sander. Well, 
Well, now I've finished sanding with the other orbital sander. It was an 80 grit. Uh, it was a round disc orbital sander. This is a palm sander. Um, what I'm going to sand with now is silicone carbide 2, 120. Uh, the reason why I use silicone carbide is it holds up long and it really cuts the wood nicely. Uh, you don't get any of those swirl marks. After I do it with 120, then I'll go to 220, and then the entire table is sanded and I'm ready to start to finish. Well, the tabletop is sanded, and now I'm going to stain it. So I mixed up some light walnut and cherry and a little paint thinner, and that's going to be the finish here. So this is the fun part. Well, I put a nice even coat of stain on the entire tabletop and now I'm wiping off all the excess. I'll just continue to wipe it off with the grain. I'll let it dry overnight and then I can finish it. First I'm putting a thin coat of urethane on the tabletop with a foam roller and that's just to get the material down on the top as fast as possible and then I'll brush it out. You wouldn't want to just use the roller, that wouldn't leave you with a good finish. Uh, another trick to using urethane is I like to put it, the can in the refrigerator for a few hours before I use it. That gives me a longer working time and helps the varnish or the urethane lay down. Now I need to make 10 of these clips. These clips, are, these clips are used for attaching the table top to the table base. Well now I have the clips. They've been pre-drilled and cut on the bandsaw, but they look a little rough. And I want them to look more like this. So an easy way to knock off those bandsaw blade marks is to turn your belt sander upside down and just so now that has a nice now that has a nice sort of rounded over feel and I'll sort of cut these corners a little bit here while I'm at it so now you can see it's getting close to the finished product well now the tabletop is done. The finish is dry and what I've done is I've flipped the top over so this is the bottom of the tabletop and the only thing I have left to do is to attach the table base to the tabletop and I'm going to do that with these clips I made earlier. So I've put some blue tape on the um, bottom of the tabletop as an indication line. Uh, I don't want the table base to move as I'm working with it and then have to uh, re-measure to get the table base where I want it to be. So by simply putting some tape there, I can just uh, pull the table uh, base to where I want it, back to the tape line. Now, I'm going to attach the um, clip I made, and you can see how it fits nicely into that slot. I made that slot with the biscuit joiner. So I put the clip where I want it to be, and then um, you have to pre-drill before uh, you put a screw into it, especially wood that's this hard and a good thing to do is to put a I put tape around the drill bit so I don't go too far I don't want to accidentally screw through the tabletop well that was the last step the base is securely attached to the top you can see I have a little bit of room on each side of the clip so the top can expand and contract and it's a nice look also.